Welcome everyone to this first in set of mini videos. So we're going to be discussing reaction mechanisms. Reaction mechanisms is a very important part of kinetics. Um, we use it all the time to try to understand chemical reactions and be able to manipulate them, be able to speed them up, to be able to control what the products are and, and, and other things. So, so understanding the reaction mechanism of a given chemical reaction is very key and very important. And there's a number of ways that we can use kind of our discussions of kinetics so far with these integrated rate laws and determining rate laws themselves, okay? Um, and how those can relate with reaction mechanisms. And so we'll, we'll dive into that over the course of many videos and, and do lots of different example situations and systems as well. Okay. So, <clears throat> right, what is a reaction mechanism? Reaction mechanism is just a set of elementary reactions, okay, that add up together to get the total chemical reaction, okay, right? Um, and, and so, <clears throat> right, it, it's a set of, you know, um, reactions A going to B, B going to C, C going to D, all to get you from A to D, right? Um, okay, the overall chemical reaction is A to D, but when the reaction is taking place, there's these steps that occur on the way, right? And these steps are called elementary reactions, elementary steps. Um, and they're, they're described like that because the idea of these reactions is they're describing what's actually happening in solution. Let's say it's a solution reaction, right? They're describing what atoms are, are forming new bonds, what atoms are breaking bonds, right? What atoms are being rearranged, right? Th these specific, you know, elementary reactions describe specifically what's happening at the molecular level, okay? Your overall chemical reaction might not actually tell you what's happening at the molecular level to get from reactants products, okay? But these elementary reactions do, okay, right? And so these reaction mechanisms, right, are describing what are the set of elementary reactions that describe at the molecular level what's happening to get from reactants to products. Okay. And so for example, right, <clears throat> different elementary reactions, right, that might occur um, are given here. Now, now the first example here is actually not an elementary reaction, it's a total chemical reaction, H2 plus Br2 going to 2HBr, okay? And that total chemical reaction, right, has a bunch of elementary steps that get to that final product, right? What you, you don't have two H2 molecules, two Br2 molecules colliding together to form HBr all in one step, okay? That doesn't happen, okay? There, there's many more steps that are involved for that overall chemical reaction. Right, so the elementary reaction um, given below that, right, is H plus Br2 going to HBr plus Br, right? This is considered a bimolecular elementary reaction, okay, because it requires two reactants, okay? We have a unimolecular elementary reaction, that's a nuclear decay, very common unimolecular elementary reactions. And then there's, for example, this reaction here that's a trimolecular elementary reaction, okay? Um, right, trimolecular elementary reactions are very slow and often not very likely, right, to, to occur in an overall reaction mechanism, okay? And the reason for this, right, if you think about it, right, why could that not be so likely to occur is because we're, when we talk about transition state theory, right, for that elementary reaction to occur, an oxygen atom, an NO molecule, and an N2 molecule all have to collide in the same point in space at the same time, right? with enough energy and in the right orientation for that reaction to occur, okay? So the likelihood of that happening is just very, very low. Even if the activation energy is very low, okay, for that, just the, the frequency of that collision occurring, three things colliding at once, okay, is just very, very unlikely, okay? And so that often makes these reactions very slow and, and typically most reaction mechanisms don't involve that because there's some faster pathway to get from reactants and products that don't involve a tertiary or trimolecular elementary reaction, okay? Um, often our elementary reactions are either unimolecular or bimolecular, okay? Right. <clears throat> okay, and again, just as a reminder, right, our overall chemical reaction is not necessarily an elementary reaction, right? Whenever we write chemical reactions in chemistry, that doesn't necessarily mean that that is exactly how things are reacting and there aren't steps that get us from that initial set of reactants to the final set of products, okay? Now note, 
For elementary reactions, we don't include the phase of the reactants or products because we're talking about things that are occurring at the molecular level. So whether or not they're in a solid phase, liquid phase, gas phase, it doesn't matter. I'm talking about an H atom reacting with a Br2 molecule, right, going to HBr plus Br. Okay. So we often just ignore phases when talking about elementary reactions because, again, it, you're talking about the atomistic rate, the molecular level rate, um, so it doesn't really matter what the phase is. Okay. Okay. So an example of a mechanism here right, is 2A going to I and then I plus B going to P. Okay. So in this reaction, right, I have rate constants for the different elementary reactions. Okay. Right, and this overall mechanism gives us an overall chemical reaction of 2A plus B going to P. Okay. A here is a reactant, B is a, pro a reactant as well, P is a product, and I is what is referred to as an intermediate. Right, Something that exists in the reaction mechanism but doesn't exist in the overall chemical reaction. Right, So intermediates don't appear in the overall chemical reaction. They exist intermediately, intermittently, right? They, they exist temporarily, right? And so, right, the they intermediates get formed within the reaction mechanism and then consumed later on within that reaction mechanism, okay? Right. Another example here, okay, in similar two-step reaction mechanism, okay, in this reaction, the reactant, the overall reaction, right, is A plus B going to P plus D, okay? You have A is um, your reactant. C here is a catalyst. Okay, I is your intermediate. You got products and reactants, right? Um, the, the catalyst is like the reactant where it doesn't appear in the overall chemical reaction, okay? But the catalyst, right, uh, instead of being pr produced and then consumed, a catalyst is consumed and then produced later in their overall reaction, right? So you see here C is consumed first. It's a reactant. And then it appears later as a product, okay, right? Um, and, and while the intermediates first appear as a product, and then they later appear as a reactant, okay? Right, how do we get then the rates of um, elementary reactions, right? Well, the convenient thing is, again, an elementary reaction describes how things are colliding, how things are happening at the atomistic molecular level. So I can tell you for this elementary reaction written here that the rate law is just this, right? That it's going to depend on the concentration of H, it's going to depend on the concentration of Br2, and it's going to have some rate constant, you know, K1 in this case, right? I wrote KR, but K1, right? Um, and that is the rate law for that elementary reaction, okay? And again, I can use that for elementary reactions because elementary reactions describe exactly what's occurring, right? Overall chemical reactions don't, right? And so conveniently, right, we can just write out rate laws for any elementary reaction, right, by just concentration of reactants times the rate constant. That's the rate law for any elementary reaction, okay? So very simple, very convenient. But I can't do that for an overall chemical reaction because an overall chemical reaction, right, isn't describing at the molecular level what's happening. Right. And then we'll just remind ourselves, this will be useful later, right, that the rate of that reaction is related with the rate of consumption of those reactants.